track. Full length. Switch props, slowly introduce them, count, one, two, three, go to the middle of the hallway, count, one, two, three, go to the opposite. Hello and welcome to the performance room. I'm joined by Nafis Ramirez Figueroa, who has just made the performance that we've just watched. Thank you so much. Um, and also by your doll. Does she have a name? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, she's going to be with us. Uh, if people have questions, I've got some questions for Nafis, but you can also submit them using the hashtag performance room to YouTube, Twitter, or Google. Um, thank you. Thank you. That was incredible. A nightmare, <laughs> a hallucination. Um, I wondered if you could say something about that because actually you, were, you said that partly this work came from a dream or a bad dream that you had as a child. Yeah, well, I think it comes from um, several dreams or a layering of them. 
in, in a way, I, um, um, I, I have some memories of stuff, mm. but then in a way that maybe they're sometimes confused if they, I actually dreamt them or I saw them somewhere. So I think partly this is why I wanted this kind of um, rolling camera up and down the hallway to give that sort of cinematic um, sort of feel of up and down. And um, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> I was going to ask whether you mean that your own recollection of your dreams as a child were merged in with like films that you've watched horror films yeah or? maybe yeah, at times I mean there's one particular dream or one particular memory I'm sure it was a memory from a movie of this nun in this cell um, with uh, bleeding eyes but I've never been able to uh, find the movie mm. I've been uh, looking for it a long time and I even did an art project about it uh, a while ago but I wasn't able to find it so well, if anybody, if anybody knows, what was the, what was the um, scene? A nun with bleeding well, eyes. Well, I remember this um, cell um, kind of railing opening up, and then there was suddenly there was a nun, and her eyes were uh, mm. bleeding, so I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Some more Googling will help. Yes. <laughs> um, but your family, you grew up in Guatemala, your yeah. early childhood. Yes. And well, it's where you live now. But mm -hmm. you said your family were involved in experimental theater there in your childhood. And did that, how does that relate to the performance that you make now? Well, I mean, it, partly this performance is related to a um, larger investigation. Um, in, in the mid 70s, my uncles were in art school and they got involved in experimental theater, um, which was very political and um, also, maybe sometimes, I, I know they did one play where all the cast was nude, and I think for Guatemala that was very like controversial. And also because most of the theater audience, I guess, were middle class, so then that would, you know, the type of audience that was going. But um, um, one per play in particular, uh, which I'm doing a project for in 2017, um, really offended one of the ministers in the government. And, um, the director received death threats and um, the entrance to the theater was shot. And um, after this play, um, all theater in Guatemala uh, was, you know, stopped being political or experimental and it became mostly comedies and children's plays. So later when I, I was growing up, I would go to a lot of children's plays and it would be the same um, actors that were before in political plays. So maybe in that kind of way, I, um, I wanted to recreate here kind of a children's feeling of a children's play mm -hmm. and sort of, um, well, at the end, the image kind of like this ghost, uh, this blue ghost uh, coming out. Mm. Yeah. So in a way, the political content of the plays that were banned got somehow transposed into a very apparently innocuous format, but it still affected you. And then you've invited children in here. Mm -hmm. Jack Stockdale has commented on YouTube saying mm -hmm. the kids look like they're having a whale of time destroying that set. And they did, because that was mm -hmm. a part of the performance. We obviously couldn't rehearse because we needed the set to mm -hmm. be intact. Mm -hmm. But what was it about this idea of like these kind of ghost memories underwriting something that you've presented that isn't explicitly referring to that history, but what is it about the energy of the kids or that, that idea of the kids being a kind of energetic force? Um, I mean, I think maybe it's always weird to use kids in plays. I mean... Yeah, never I've, work with children. Right? <laughs> it's the rule, isn't it? Um, but, um, and also because there's some projection, like an, an adult telling them what to do. So it is a bit strange. So I, I would say maybe there's a bit of... Uh, you know, projection onto them, because um, I would like to destroy some things and stuff. Not that my art is always um, psychological or emotionally mm. based, but I wanted to dedicate, dedicate the next year to exploring this kind of things uh, for a series of performances. So, and this would be the first one that would be so much going back into something. Uh huh. Yeah. So, in a way, you want to go back to some classic body art or uh, like performance art ideas of um, 
maybe, action. Well, maybe not destructive action. Mm, <laughs> maybe not going back to the history of performance, since I feel like there's been a bit too much of that. Mm. But maybe going back to um, maybe going back to something I mean embodied in me um, and why I, I started performing in my late teens. So. Do you know why that was? Because you also obviously make sculpture and you've made all these amazing props out of mm -hmm. polystyrene and you also show sculpture. You're, you've got a great show on now at Gasworks in London where you're showing polystyrene sculptures that also have this kind of nightmarish, hallucinatory quality. Mm -hmm. But what is it about performing that's important to, you, to your work or what gave you that impulse? Can you remember? Well, I think in my late teens it was... Uh, feeling of transgression of appearing in public and also appearing in public uh, doing something that maybe didn't make that much sense and in in an extension of me exploring the visual arts and um, and then also well in like when I was 20 I did like my first nude performance and I think um, as a 20 year old to do that it was very like it was like a different thing, and maybe, you know, of course it's a cliche in performance art, but I, um, you know, I, th I think it, I mean, I, I remember hearing somebody around the artist that I was hanging out with um, in, in my, you know, when I was 20 or 19, that performance art was for the young. Oh. And um, I think maybe because it meant so much for me at that time, I mean, right now, I feel like I'm trying to redefine what performance is for me, but um, I don't know if that answers your question or I took it somewhere else. No, it does. I think, I mean, you're still using performance as a space to experiment in, even yeah. though there was a degree of rehearsal. You're yeah. sort of finding a place in the world for these objects that you're making too, in a situation with people, rather than mm. only sh displaying them, I guess. Yeah, I feel like perform. I also try to never repeat performance, mm. so I feel it's always kept that experimental uh, feeling, and and maybe that's why um, I can still perform um, because yeah, you're right. It still has that feeling. You're finding something out. Yeah, finding something it. out. I mean, I've never done a. I never worked with. Well, I did work with a child once. I, he played drums during one of my early pieces, um, but. Um, yeah, I w trying different things and, and also right now um, looking at different ways of um, performing, like looking to like children's plays and such things right now. Mm. Yeah. There are quite a few comments and questions and things mm -hmm. coming in. Um, Chrissy Tirintana, uh, Titania, if I pronounced it correctly, has said it's definitely nightmarish towards the end. The doll sculpture is very haunting. And Rafaela Davis asked, related to what you've been saying about performance actually, do you feel the piece becomes less of a performance as it exists as a video? And could it be, be seen as being less honest in that sense, being you know, presented towards the camera than, than a live situation? Um, I feel like in, in a way, having the children here and having, you know, you can't rehearse with them that much. You, you, no. And so then it kept the, it kept it more to the spirit of performance art mm. that I know. I wondered if you almost brought the kids in for that reason, actually. Maybe. That they could Maybe uh, the unconsciously. Authentic, you know. Yeah, this frantic thing. And I know it was, it w weren't sure whether what we asked them to do would actually happen. But, no. but it did. Well, and then the, they brought their own stuff. So... It is strange, you know, performance art through video, but I, I feel like um, when I was 20 in the late 90s, uh, it was hard to see documentation of performance art. Yeah. Like the, I pretty much, the performance art that I knew was a performance art that I would attend mm. because the, there was nowhere I could see it. And so uh, I think now it's, it's different because you, you do have access to archives and and different stuff. Of course, a lot of it is really bad, but um, but that's the nature yeah. also. But we actually wanted in the series to make it as a primary space for the performance, you know, to camera rather than it being a second. Yeah, I mean, it's it's about the camera, and the camera is very present here, mm. 
with the tracks and everything, yes. yes. Yeah, well, you used it and played on that, which was mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, lots of other comments. Leon Harris said, the dark scene with the glow-in-the-dark body remind me of a nightmare or bad dream. That lingering phantom-like figure was creepy. Um, someone else commented, Domen Domenico Olivero asked whether the children was a kind of game for you. Is art a game? That's a, that's a, mm. a big question. <laughs> well, I set up a few rules and some things that they, you know, they could do, so it was a game. Yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of performance like Fluxus in the 60s would use game mm -hmm. strategies. You didn't use it explicitly that way. No. It was, but it was playful, I guess, yeah. how you involved them. Um, Jack Stockdale's asked another question, actually, about the civil war that's been part of Guatemalan history. And is your work, is that part of what you think about in making work, and how is your work received in today's political environment? Well, I feel like, um, as I was talking to one of your colleagues, uh, Frederic, that I, I sort of, um, the Civil War has been with me for a while as a source, mm. but of course it's, it's been quite a few years since it ended, and uh, it marked my childhood a lot, and I sort of wanted to I want, I want to get over it and maybe uh, make art about other stuff. I think maybe the Gasworks shows a bit about that because it's about conspiracy theories and reptilians. Um, God's reptilian finger. Yes. Yeah. So, um, in, um, but then in performance art, since, and also because my memories are, you know, embodied and it's the body, when you do performance art, I guess unless you use other performers to totally perform for you, mm. it's hard to get away from yourself. Then I wanted, I wanted to, um, you know, look at that more and, and not ignore it. So that hopefully um, after the next year is over, you know, maybe I'll make art about something else and I'll be liberated from that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I guess the figure of the ghost is has kind of recurred, and I don't know if that's connected. Yeah, and the, also the blue ghost. The blue ghost the, specifically. Yeah, well, the, in that video I did, which you used for your trailer, where I, I paint mm. my friend in, in chrome blue, that's part of it. What, why, is it why is the ghost blue? I'm not sure. I think partly it has to the do blue with... The blue light, the black light. The blue light, but also um, this kind of stories about the will of the wisp and this kind of uh, blue mm. smokiness that supposedly appears in graveyards and stuff at mm. night. So, I don't know, maybe like a little folk, folk story kind of uh, influence. And, um, and also preparing for this, I had a dream or, or something with this group of um, dancers dancing in, in, uh, in blue pajamas. So I think partly the... That's the <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. So yeah. then the blue came came off again or came back again. Interesting. So all these compositional questions are coming together to create the mood more than necessarily a strict narrative, even though you're quite influenced by literature and stories. Yeah, I mean, straight narrative isn't, you know, what I do. And also even in literature, I, I really like literature that doesn't really make sense or is not so narrative. So, mm. yeah. Um, there's a comment from Angelica Chido Tsoli who says, Hello people, it's the first time to join Performance Room and it's so amazing, the live performance, the Q&A and the chat. <laughs> um, but she's saying it reminds me of the Black Theatre of Prague. I don't know if that is a reference point for you. I'm not familiar no, with it. Have but to look um, it up. Yeah. Um, there's another question, Pasty Normal. Uh, I think that's Pablo Bronstein, who made a previous work, asked, okay. is the use of polystyrene an evocation of an earlier period of film history? Maybe. Why, why do you use polystyrene? Well, it started off, um, I, I did this, uh, one of my first opportunities to dedicate myself to sculpture was at Schloss Solitude in Germany. I was directed by Dan Graham. And then when I got there, um, I called my mentor and said, oh, I have a sculpture residency. <laughs> what do I do? Because I, I don't know, in art school, I didn't really learn many techniques. It was mostly um, theory and stuff. Yeah. So then he just, uh, he suggested I use polystyrene. Um, you know, I think he partly worked in uh, making theater props to make a living. And, 
and of course it's one of the main materials. Yeah. And um, afterwards, I sort of started um, seeing how a lot of contemporary sculpture uses polystyrene, mm. but they don't mention it in the list of materials. So then... Um, you mean because they're treating it to look like something else? Or they're putting fiberglass or something uh, else on it. Uh. And, or even Kara Walker's uh, big sugar sculpture was mostly polystyrene. So I was interested in, in doing sculpture that made polystyrene apparent. It's interesting. So you're kind of back to truth to materials. A little bit with polystyrene, yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah. And body art, it's very interesting. You've kind of come full circle with the authenticity. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I guess modernism, I don't, know, I don't know. We'll, we'll <laughs> analyze that later. Yes. Um, Tabia, who's a student in performance art, um, is live streaming the performance in her class right now, she says. She said, I'm curious as to why you don't feel comfortable engaging with the history of performance art. Oh, um, I just feel it, w it was overdone in the 90s and early 2000s. There was a lot of recreation. Mm. And Marina Abramovich and others. Actually, let's not credit Marina Abramovich because <laughs> other people were doing it first. Yeah, and I, I watched lots of this, and um, I feel like uh, same as painting or other mediums, performance art can run a, a, like renew itself. And so, um, you know, I, I watched lots of recreations, and I... Mm. I've studied the documentation from the 70s and so on, and people like Gina Pane and stuff are, you know, my idols. But, you know, I, I feel like I don't really want to recreate either. I don't want to spend my life um, recreating, recreating or studying somebody else's achievements. Yeah, well, you haven't done that here because you've made your own thing. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess what was helpful about that moment with the recreations maybe was that it sort of brought to mind and brought to visibility a history of a medium that was otherwise always disappearing. It's so true. it's a kind I, of foundation, I think. For it's true. I mean, there, there was no recompilation of what performance art had been. Yeah. But at the same time, the, um, the making a canon of performance art was a bit false, yeah. because of course there was always many different kinds of performance art. There wasn't just one kind. Um, no. So I know that when we talk about art history, we mostly talk about this 1970s in the studio kind of materials, where at the same time people were doing kind of cabaret stuff yeah. and things like that. Exactly, we've got a certain idea of authentic naked pain mm -hmm. and, and um, like it's experimentation on the body, I think, that's associated with the 70s. Mm -hmm. And as you say, there's a lot of stuff coming out as well to do with identity and glamour and transformation. Which is always the problem with creating a canon, no? Yeah. 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 We do that in the museum. <laughs> on. I'm sorry. We keep working on it, adjusting it. Um, there's a comment from Philippa who says, your performance has a feeling of fun and irony, even if you're talking about something serious. Most of contemporary art is quite serious. How do you see the relationship between art and joy? Um, well, myself personally, um, I don't know if this performance was funny watching it, but uh, for me, if, if it's kind of funny, uh, then it's kind of a good, good work that I've done. So uh, I think this is one of my personal you know, satisfactions of working. So it has to have something there that I can chuckle over after. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's a good attitude. Or, or during, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting though how you combine that with the kind of surrealist, disturbing quality. I mean, this did have both in the way that you could see behind the special effects that were quite, I mean, the special effects were kind of rudimentary. <laughs> yes. But then in your sculptures, like the, the sculptures at Gasworks that have this quality of being almost like enlarged, cuts of meat or flesh mm -hmm. um, that really have quite a disturbing feel to them. Yeah. But I suppose also cartoony in a way at the same time. Yeah, and I guess that's, that's the joy, humor mm. part. Yeah. Uh, a. Al, I think it is, a question from, how do you want the audience to perceive your work and your ideas? That's kind of a difficult question. Yeah, I mean, question. I don't know, I mean, um, yeah, that's a difficult question. Do you think question. about that? Do you think when you're making a work like this, where you can't see the audience, maybe it's oddly more similar to a gallery show where you don't necessarily 
yeah. see the audience? Yeah, I mean, it's do, different. Do you I mean, think about the audience? I mean, I do. I mean, with this performance, of course, I had, I had a little bit of a feeling in mind. But then once everything came together, I thought, wow, this is really a children's play. <laughs> so that was a bit yeah. st strange for me. Um, and I even thought of telling my friends, oh, your kids can watch it. Because I know some people don't bring their children to my uh, performances uh, because they're afraid, well, you know, what, 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 will, you what will the performance artists do? But yeah. I feel like this one was pretty, uh, you know, it would be funny. Good for kids. You're good for kids, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I told my children to watch it too. <laughs> okay, they are. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, lots of comments coming in. One more I'll read from Chrissy, who adds, I think using the polystyrene makes it so fragile. Absolutely loving this. Uh, lots more. I'm not able to read more. Um, another question, actually, asking about how you chose the children, but we helped you. Yes, you guys find the me. children, and the children were fantastic. So yes, thank you to them. Uh, thank you so much. I think that's thank probably you. all we've got time for. But okay. thanks so much for talking as thank well so afterwards, much. and for the work, mm -hmm. and for doing our second to last <laughs> performance. The last one will be next week with Michael Smith. So please watch then, same time next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.